Hello, this is a video about a way to control shell-like programs from MX. That way is called a pitch, and it can be used as a, uh, just by itself, but it is usually used as part of a bigger package called AV. Let me start with the demonstration, which is this, that I'm going to explain soon. So notice that we have the script here at the left, and here we have a terminal running a shell, a terminal running Python. Both terminals are running inside the max buffers. They can be used as, as normal as normal terminals running shells and, 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 and a Python interpreter. For example, I can uh, select this window and type this command and then type return and the command is executed. The same thing here. But what's, what's happening is that I'm preparing the commands here in the script and then I'm sending the commands to these terminals. Let me explain it, it in a bit more detail. This whole thing here is what I'm calling an EP script. We are going to execute it line by line and to execute a line we just need to type F8 on the line and then the line is executed and the cursor moves down. But uh, let me introduce a bit of terminology. This is a red star line and this is a non-red star line or a, or a normal line. And F F8 acts in a certain way on red star lines and, and in a totally different way in non-red star lines. If I type F8 on the, on the red star line, the rest of the line is, is executed as Lisp. And as most th things in the Max are, are written in Lisp, the idea is that with these red star lines we can, you can do essentially anything. So I'm using the first three lines to create a certain window setup uh, with the script at the left and the terminals uh, running shell and Python at the right. And then uh, this thing selects a target and this th these things are sent to a certain target and so on. So, as I said, these first three lines, they, they create a certain window setting. This line here sends, sets the, the Python to, to, sets the target to Python. These lines here, when, when we type a fate on them, each one of them is going to be sent to the Python interpreter. This one changes the, the target and the target becomes the shell. These lines are sent to the shell and so on. Uh, we are going to see very soon how to create scripts like this and all this part here is, is going to, to explain it's, there's nothing hard about this but these first three lines they, they use advanced features that I'm not going to, to explain here but they are only advanced in the sense that beginners are not expected to, to, to know how to write these things but to execute a script it's very simple even, even if it's, if it's if there is something that you do not understand in a red star line, you just need to type F8 there, if you trust that, that the, the script is not going to do anything very bad, and that's it. Uh, last comments. Oh, so, sorry. <clears throat> the last comments is that uh, <clears throat> there is no way at all to execute an, an a script like this at once. So the, there isn't a key that you can type here and ex ex execute all that stuff uh, with just one key. This is a design decision. This is deliberate. And uh, this has several reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, this has made the programming much simpler. And the other reason is that these things, the APH scripts are made to be to be executed and developed interactively. Uh, as MX, uh, for example, if we type F8 on this line here, MX does not, is not looking at what, what happens bef below this line or above it. So we can, we can type F8 on this line and then we can, we can write the next thing that we want to be executed by Python or by the shell or maybe another red star line. So we can develop these things as we, are, as we execute them. 
and also we can single step a program by, by executing just 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 the lines that we want uh, at the speed that we want so uh, we get several several development and debugging tools uh, with no extra effort with just this real design decision that things are made to be executed li line by line uh, as we saw here when we executed this line the target was set was set to python uh, that is to this buffer here that is in this window and we got a message just to, to make it super clear that the target is this this buffer and this window here and so these lines were sent to python these lines were sent to shell blah 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 what happens when the the targets are not being shown on the screen let's see if I execute this line here uh, <coughs> MX will will make sure that the, the target which is the Python window uh, is displayed on the screen in another window as it, as it is not being displayed right now and and as uh, and and uh, and and as and as there is a condition that it, it, it needs to be shown in another window MX will have to split the current window and show the target at the other window so we are reusing the target that we, are, that we had before and if I type F8 here on this line <coughs> this line is going to be sent to, to the same Python interpreter as before now I switch the Python to, to the shell and we also, had a, a show, we also have a shell buffer but it's not being shown on the screen so MX will, will have to make sure that, it's, that it is shown on the screen in another window and it is, in a, and it's going to reuse this window here to show the to, to show the shell. So the default for a pitch is to to use just two windows, a window for the the script and a window for the target. And the trick that uh, that I said that, that was a bit advanced is that these first three lines here, they create a window setting like this, which is not very standard. And what happens when when the target does not exist? Let me kill the, the shell buffer to, uh, to show what happens. Let me execute this. So now the shell buffer does not, does not exist anymore. Now if I run ap shell, MX will have to create a, tar a shell target in another window. And it creates, its, it creates its, a new so you got a shell that has just started it has, it has no history the only thing that cell has, that the shell has said until now is the in this prompt here where it where it shows uh, where we are so if i execute this line this line is sent to a new shell well Scripts usually suppose that they are being run in a new environment, so it's quite common to need to, to send things that, that are to a shell that we are sure that are new. It's, it's, common to, 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 it's very common that we want to send things to a new shell. So the trick is that we, if we execute this command here, apitch kill, it kills the current target. So we do not have a shell buffer anymore. If I execute this, it creates a new shell, and it selects and it sets the target to the shell. So now that the, that the target is a shell, if I if I execute this line here, I kill the shell, and if I execute this line here, I recreate a shell. So by executing these three lines here, uh, we can be sure that we are running a new shell. So now let me send this command to the shell. This command is uh, sec. It prints the sequence of all numbers from from the from two to five. And now let me send these things. The, sh the shell is going to ignore these things in a sense because they are comments. Uh, <coughs> now suppose that we want to to uh, take a look at the man page for the comment sec. 
One of the, thi the things that EV does is that it implements several ways of using uh, Lisp, mainly as hyperlinks. So this thing here can be used as, as a hyperlink in the sense that if, if we execute it, it is going to open the man page for sec in the current window. So executing this is a is a simple way, is a quick way to, to go to document to the documentation of sec. And to go back, we just need to to kill the current window, the, the current buffer, and we go back to where we were before. If we just want the, the output of this command, there is this 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 command here, this command here, find sh0, which executes this thing in a shell, and it displays the, res the, the output of that command in the echo area, which means here, as a string. And if I want to, if I want to, exec to execute something and to, to display the, the result in a buffer by itself, I can execute find sh, which does the same as, as find sh0, but it displays the, the output in a buffer, whose name is the name of the command that we have executed. And of course, this idea of, of, of executing a command in a shell and displaying its, its, its result is useful for millions of things. For example, this thing here, uh, we'll call the program dict to, co to consult a dictionary and to say to, uh, to show the definition for SMOP. Uh, it consults all the dictionary av the dictionaries available in my, in my machine and it discovers that in the in the jargon file there's a definition for SMOP. And this kind of thing is, al is also on EEV is a, is what we call uh, a refined hyperlink, which does this, the same thing as before, but it also looks for the first occurrence of this string in the buffer. So this is going to create the same buffer as before, dict swap. Here's the name of the command, and it's going to jump to the fir uh, to the first occurrence of the string minor detail in the buffer. But this, um, but I'm not going to explain much of this in in this video. The, the there are other videos about this, that. So, uh, you probably have guessed that, that it's, a, it's quite common to have a shell command that we, we want to convert into a hyperlink. So, it's, uh, for example, for this command here, we want to convert it to a hyperlink by preceding it by this and, and putting also uh, close quotes and the close parentheses after it. As this is a common operation, there must be a quick way to do that. And the trick is that EV implements several several wrapping commands that take the current line and wraps it in, in, into uh, with, which, uh, as I've done before, with something like this before it and something like this after the current contents and contents of the lines and all these wrapping comments have the convention that they are called by uh, meta uppercase letter which is something that uh, as far as I know there, there are no standard MX, MX package that use this comment so they are, they are not going to interfere with usual com with, with usual key bindings uh, if I type meta uppercase M here this thing is converted to to a, a link to a man page. If I type meta uppercase S here, this thing is converted to to hyperlink to the result of running this in a shell. And by the way, this th this expression here it executes this sequence of, of of keys as if the user had typed them. So if I execute this expression, what's going to happen is that the MX is going to think that we have typed down, then meta uppercase M, then down again. Let's do that. Let's do that again. Now for meta uppercase S. And now let's do that again for meta uppercase T. So here we got a sequence of three lines like this one. We started with just Python and 
we typed method because t here and this line has become three lines the first one was was repeated on the top on the, on the bottom and, and and between them sandwiched with, between them we have an e pitch kill which is the the thing that i have explained here so to type uh, these sequences of, of three lines we just need to write to write the the name of the command that we want to to run the the name of the command that's going to be the target for a pitch and type meta shift t and notice that we do not we do not need we, we don't even need to remember how to type the red star because this thing creates the red stars by itself well all these things are explained in the documentation of ev so let me uh, uh, and there are several executable examples the the best way to access the documentation is through e jump which is bind to MetaJ. Uh, MetaJ is, is something much more generic than, than just something that consults the, the documentation. If we type MetaJ without any numeric arguments, it shows its behaviors when it receives numeric arguments. So this table here explains that when the numeric argument is 5, then it's going to execute this. When the, the numeric argument is 5, 0, it's going to execute this and so on. And in the comments here, we have a, a brief explanation of what are the main actions. So the main action is here. The, the main one that in, interests us now is meta 5j. which gives us the, the index of all the, the documentation pages of AV. And all these documentation pages are uh, written as, as sandboxes, uh, which means that we can write anything we want here. For example, this. And we do not need to worry of, uh, about uh, change in the documentation files forever because the, this, these files are, these buffers are temporary and they are very easy to recreate. Uh, by the way, buffers like this usually start with a with, uh, with, uh, Lisp expression like this that recreates the buffer. So I've just recreated the buffer with, without the, the mess that I just did. And this is an index to, to all this sandbox tutorials. Here at this one are the complete the complete explanations about uh, ePitch. Here are the complete explanations about wrapping. And the example that we saw, the advanced example with three windows, it uses it is either here or here, I can't remember. But let me go back. Ah here. Uh, we can use this hi refined hyperlink here. Uh, it opens the documentation for a pitch and it jumps to this example to it to it jumps to the first occurrence of this string, which is a hyperlink to, to more advanced sandbox tutorials tutorial. And I took the, the example script from here. Uh, now let me show very briefly some other examples of things that can be done with a pitch. Uh, here's the documentation of, of what if you can do with PDF-like documents, which are documents that are, that are split in pages like PDFs, uh, DJVUs, and things like that, like those. So right in the beginning of the of the of the tutorial about PDF-like documents. There is this ePitch script here that runs in a shell and it switches to, to the temporary directory and it, it creates a, a tag file here and it runs LaTeX and PDF LaTeX on that to create a PDF document. And now if I execute this, this expression here, I open the, this PDF document 
on page four. And uh, another example of things that, that can be done that, uh, with EV and a pitch. This one is more a pitch than than the one before. Is that we can write tutorials for languages or for or for other programs. Uh, uh, I, I like a language called Lua very much, and I, you know, I sometimes have to explain it to, to friends and sometimes to students. And so I wrote a, <coughs> an interactive tutorial for it that I use as sometimes I use as, as slides, and I and I execute them during the presentation. Sometimes I just <coughs> show to to the people how to execute them, and they they can execute the things by, the examples by themselves. So here I, I just uh, opened a part of the tutorial. This is this is an index for the tutorial. So I'm I'm in an advanced part about closures. Uh, I'm going to call Lua. By the way, this hyperlink would open uh, a page of of a book about Lua, and this this hyperlink here would open a, uh, the Lua reference manual. So here we are. I just opened a, a new uh, interpreter running Lua. Now I send this, these lines to it and sort of define the function called foo. And then this, then I define get one and set one, get two and set two, and I test this function somehow. And the syntax for comments in Lua starts with dash dash so several lines uh, end with comments and this comment sometimes explain what uh, what is going to be the output of the comment so here this is to make the the slide the this script easier to understand even if we don't have the output it shows that the output of this comment is going to be 22, 22, and the output of this comment is going to, to be 33, 22, 33. Uh, that's it. I wanted to, to make a short video this time. There's a, uh, there are, there's a, uh, a big video about AV on that side that I, that I, when I, when I started doing, doing it, I had the hope that, that, it, that it would last about five minutes but it ended up being more than one hour long so this one at least is just about 20 minutes if you if you want more information you can either google for my name which is Eduardo Ox and then you're going to open my page to, to reach my page and there's a section in my page here that has news and other links about TV you can also send me an email Please do because every all kinds of feedback help, and um, I also hang out on on IRC whatever, uh, whenever I can at Free Node, and there's a channel about EV. So if you want, please go there and let's chat. That's it.